जय हिंद माई सेल्फ रविंद्र कुमार ए पी इन ई एन डिपार्टमेंट ए के जी ई सी इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद टूडे आई एम प्रजेंटिंग ऑन द टॉपिक मैश और लूप एनालिसिस इन द फर्स्ट यूनिट एंड द यूनिट नेम इज डी सी सर्किट्स एंड दिस इज कवर्ड अंडर द सब्जेक्ट फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग फॉर विच द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज बी डबल ई वन जीरो वन and this is intended for all the different branches students which are taking this course or which are going through this course in first year uh, curriculum so if we see in this what we are to do we are to simplify a circuit or we are to solve a circuit using mesh or loop analysis for a given circuit uh, and for that what we do we identify the mesh or loop and then we write kvl equations Uh, with the help of kvl for those different mesh or loops and then we simplify we solve those equations and then we come to know the different currents in different branches or also we can find voltages across different branches in the circuit and that way we finally solve the circuit using this mesh or loop analysis method so if we see it the topics covered under this that are number 1 uh, that is loop or mesh analysis that is this topic is covered loop or mesh analysis and then we will go through super mesh analysis that is also the part of this mesh analysis there is a small difference or say the minor difference between mesh and super mesh that we will see later on in the coming slides that what is the difference between mesh and super mesh and how do we apply this analysis to the super mesh also that we will observe later on so further if we see what is mesh first thing is the definition of loop and mesh so if we see it what is a loop and what is a mesh a loop is a any closed path in a circuit means if we are given any circuit and if we take any closed path in that circuit that we call loop or mesh but again there is a difference also between mesh and loop that we can see here a mesh is the smallest loop in a circuit or a mesh is a loop that contains no other loops in the circuit that means suppose we are given any circuit so in that circuit we will be having mesh and loop both but the difference is that mesh is the smallest closed path or smallest loop mesh is smallest closed path in the circuit while the loop that may be bigger than mesh or we can also say the mesh it is a it is a loop it is a kind of loop but that doesn't contain any other loop inside that that's why we call it that it is the smallest closed path in the circuit which we call mesh so that it is very much clear from this now that loop may be bigger than mesh and loop is also a closed path so this is the basic difference between loop and mesh so if we will uh, see it clearly or we will identify mesh and loop in a given circuit in the coming slide so if we see in this circuit we are given this circuit this circuit is we are it, uh, we have written the name of these terminals like this is a this is terminal b similarly this is terminal c similarly this is terminal d this is terminal e and terminal f so this is a complete circuit a b c d e f this is a complete circuit now out of this if we see the closed paths in this a b e f a that is a closed path a b e f a is a closed path and it is a smallest closed path so this is a mesh since mesh is smallest closed path similarly if we see b c d e b 
that is also a smallest closed path in this given circuit. So, this is also a mesh. While if we see entire circuit, where that means A, C, D, E, F, A, this is not the smallest closed path. This is closed path, but not the smallest closed path. That is why it is a loop. From this, by seeing this circuit, the different closed paths like A, B, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, B and A, C, D, F, A. We can simply see that what is the difference between mesh and loop. So, we have identified it that A, B, E, F, A that is a mesh. Similarly, B, C, D, E, B that is also a mesh, but A, C, D, F, A that is a loop since it is closed path, but it is containing uh, two different closed paths inside itself. That is why A, C, D, F, A we cannot say it is a mesh, it is a loop. Uh, so, that way we have it. Now, further when we are to simplify this circuit using mesh or loop analysis, what we do in this? Here we are given that we are having 42 volt voltage source or a battery connected here with this plus terminal here and minus terminal here. Then this is 6 ohm resistance. Here it is 3 ohm resistance. This 6 ohm is connected between A and B terminals. Similarly, 4 ohm resistance that is connected between B and C. Now, again this 10 volt battery is connected between C and D and the negative terminal is this, positive terminal is this and uh, this 3 ohm resistance that is connected between B and E, 42 volt battery that is connected between A and F. So, these are the different elements which are connected in this circuit and from this uh, we can again uh, see another thing that this voltage source of 42 volt and 10 volt they are active elements while this 6 ohm, 4 ohm and 3 ohm they are passive elements as we have discussed in the uh, earlier slides that uh, earlier discussions that what are active and passive elements on that basis we can identify it that 42 volt and 10 volt they are active elements since they are providing energy to the circuit while 6 ohm, 4 ohm and 3 ohm they are taking energy they are transforming electrical energy to the heat energy. So, they are passive elements in this circuit. So, now uh, once we have identified the mesh and loop. Now, what we do uh, in the next step, we assume the mesh currents like in mesh A, B, E, F, A, we have assumed this mesh current I1 in clockwise orientation. Similarly, in another mesh B, C, D, E, B, we have assumed the mesh current I2 and that is also in clockwise orientation that we have assumed. Now, another thing which is important in this, these two mesh currents, they may be taken in same orientation or they may be taken in different orientations that does not matter. Uh, we can take it in random orientations, any orientation may be taken for I1 and I2, those two orientations may be similar orientations or those two may be different orientations also. Now, in the next step what we do, uh, we write the KVL equations for these two meshes that is mesh A, B, E, F, A and mesh B, C, D, E, B. So, we will have two equations for, uh, with the help of this and we have two unknowns I1 and I2. So, on solving those equations, we will find the values of I1 and I2 and that way we will be able to find current in the different branches of this circuit using this mesh analysis method. So, now the method to write these equations, how to write these equations, what we do for that? Uh, in the direction of orientation, we traverse in this mesh A, B, E, F, A for which we are to write KVL equation. So, what will be the equation? when we are traversing in uh, or orientation of I 1, this 42 volt battery, this in this we are going from negative to positive plate inside the battery. So, it will be having positive sign 42 volt and on the right hand side in 6 ohm the voltage drop will be 6 I 1, since I 1 is the current passing through 6 ohm and it is in the orientation of I 1 we are moving that is why the voltage drop will be positive 6 I 1. Then next we have 3 ohm resistance in this mesh A, B, E, F, A. So, in this we, are, we can see there are two currents. I 1 is going downward as per the orientation of I 1, while I 2 is going upward as per the orientation of I 2. But we are moving as per I 1 orientation. So, that means we are moving in downward orientation for this 3 ohm resistance in this mesh A, B, E, F, A. 
so the net current will be i1 minus i2 in downward direction and according to that the voltage drop in this will be 3 into i1 minus i2 so this will be kvl equation for this mesh a b e f a. this is suppose equation number 1 and for this uh, i have applied the rule sigma e equal to sigma i r which is kvl with the help of that i have written this equation similarly for second mesh that is b c d e b this equation is for mesh kvl equation for mesh A, B, E, F, A. Similarly, for mesh, uh, another mesh cable equation uh, that is for B, C, D, E, B. Now, in this, what, if, what we are having? We are having this 10 volt voltage source, 3 ohm resistance and 4 ohm resistance, which are in this mesh B, C, D, E, B. So, as per the orientation of I2, when we are moving, we are moving in, in negative to inside the battery and from negative to positive plate for 10 volt battery. So, this will be taken 10 volt on one side, that is sigma E equal to sigma I R. So, in 3 ohm resistance, I2 current is going upward as per the orientation of I2, while I1 is coming downward. So, net current in 3 ohm will be I2 minus I1 in upward direction, which is the or orientation of I2 also. So, the voltage drop in 3 ohm will be 3 into I2 minus I1 as per that. Now, in 4 ohm resistance, only I2 current is there and that is in the orientation of I2. So, that will be taken plus sign plus 4 I2. So, this will be another mesh equation for second mesh B, C, D, E, B. So, these are the two mesh equations uh, for these two meshes and we have two unknowns uh, which are mesh currents I1 and I2 as per the orientations, clockwise orientations we have selected for these two we, and already we have discussed that they can be taken anti-clockwise or random orientation can also be taken for these two. Accordingly, we will write KVL equations. So, now on solving these two equations, we will come to know the values of I1 and I2 and once we uh, are able to find these two currents I1 and I2 we can find the current in any element or in any branch of this circuit. So, if we see it, these are the KVL equations. Uh, this is first equation, which is for first mesh A, B, E, F, A. And on simplifying, it comes out as this. And for second mesh, this is the KVL equation. Well, this is for B, C, D, E, B. And on simplifying, this equation comes in this form. So, now these two variables I1 and I2 or unknowns are there and two equations we have on solving this we get the value of I1 and I2. So, on solving the equations I1 comes out as 6 ampere while I2 comes out as 4 ampere. So, from this uh, we come to know that I1 that is 6 ampere current in first mesh in clockwise orientation while I2 is 4 ampere in second mesh again it is in clockwise orientation since we have assumed clockwise orientations for both I1 and I2. It may also happen suppose I2 comes out as minus 4 suppose. That time it will indicate the minus sign with 4 ampere uh, I, for I2 we, uh, as we have assumed. So, minus sign indicates that the orientation which we have selected for I2, actually I2 will be opposite to that orientation and that is why this minus sign is there due to that. Otherwise, if the orientation is same that we have assumed, that time minus sign will not be there like I2 is 4 ampere and I1 is 6 ampere. So, now if we want to find the current in 3 ohm resistance, that current was I1 minus I2 that we have seen in the previous slide. I1 minus I2 in downward direction that is the current in 3 ohm. So, that can be found from this that is coming as 2 ampere in downward direction. And if we find it in upward direction, so that time it will be minus 2 ampere in upward direction. So, that way we get it that what will be the current in different branches. So, similarly, if we want to find in other branches, what are the currents like in this 6 ohm. In 6 ohm, I1 is the current. So, I1 we got 6 ampere. So, this will be 6 ampere in this direction. 
Similarly, I2 we have found 4 ampere, so in 4 ohm it will be 4 ampere in this direction. So, that way we can find the current in all the different branches of the circuit using this mesh analysis method. Now, another example we can have for this, like in this circuit, uh, this is circuit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A. We have given the different names for different terminals. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, like this. So, if we see in this, what are there different elements, 60 volt voltage source is there with plus minus terminals that are indicated. Uh, 7 ohm resistance is there, 12 ohm resistance, 6 ohm resistance and 12 ohm resistance. These are the different elements which are connected in this circuit. Now, if we see the mesh in this, A, B, G, H, A, that is one mesh, A, B, G, H, A. See, this is the smallest closed path in this circuit. So, that, that is a mesh, as already we have discussed what is mesh. So, A, B, G, H, A is a mesh. Similarly, another mesh is B, C, F, G, B. This is second mesh, B, C, F, G, B. Another mesh is C, D, E, F, C. So, this is our first step that we are to identify what are the different meshes available in this circuit. Now, in the next step what we do? We assume mesh currents in different meshes. So, like in first mesh A, B, G, H, A, we have assumed I 1 is the mesh current in clockwise orientation. We can take it in anti-clockwise orientation also that will not affect the result. Similarly, in second mesh B, C, F, G, B, we have assumed I 2 is the mesh current in clockwise orientation. And in third mesh C, D, E, F, C, we have assumed I 3 is the mesh current in clockwise orientation. We can take it in random orientation I 1, I 2, I 3, that is not important that it is to be taken in same orientation like clockwise or anticlockwise. They may be taken in random orientation, meaning to say some of the mesh current they can be taken clockwise, some of the mesh current can be taken in anticlockwise or counterclockwise orientation also. That will not affect the result. So, now if we uh, further see in the next step what we are to do, we are to write KVL equations for the different mesh. That means for A, B, G, H, A, B, C, F, G, B and C, D, E, F, C. Uh, so, in that way we will have three KVL equations for these three different mesh and we have three unknowns I 1, I 2 and I 3 which are the three mesh currents. So, on solving those three equations, we will come to know the values of I 1, I 2 and I 3 and once we are able to find these three currents I 1, I 2 and I 3, we can find the current in any, in any branch or in any element of this circuit. So, if we see these equations in the first mesh A, B, G, H, A, the equation is this 60 equal to 7 I 1 plus 12 I 1 minus I 2. Why it is so? Since when we are moving in uh, orientation as per I 1, in 60 volt we are moving from negative to positive like this. So, this is plus 60. In 7 ohm, this is 7 I 1. In 12 ohm, I 1 current is going downward while I 2 current is going upward. But as per the orientation of I 1, we are to move downward in 12 ohm in this mesh A B G H A. So, net current will be I 1 minus I 2 that time. So, that is why the voltage drop will be 12 into I 1 minus I 2. So, this will be the mesh equation for this mesh. A, B, G, H, A or on simplifying this comes out as 60 equal to 19 I1 minus 12 I2. This is equation number 1. Similarly, for second mesh that is B, C, F, G, B. This is for mesh uh, first equation was for A, B, G, H, A. For second mesh uh, we can see there is no battery or no voltage source in this second mesh B, C, F, G, B. So, one side of, of the equation will be 0 due to it since there is no voltage supply or battery in this mesh B, C, F, G, B. On the right hand side where we have to take I R drops in 6 ohm I 2 is going downward as per the orientation we have assumed while I 3 is going upward again as per the orientation of I 3 that we have selected. 
So, as per the orientation of I2, we have to go downward in 6 ohm. So, that is why the voltage drop will be 6 into I2 minus I3 since net current is I2 minus I3 in downward direction in 6 ohm. Similarly, in 12 ohm, I2 current is going upward while I1 current is going downward simultaneously. So, net current in upward direction is I2 minus I1. Since we are to move upward in 12 ohm as per the orientation of I2. So, the voltage drop will be 12 into I2 minus I1 as per that. And on simplification, this equation turns as 0 equal to 18 I2 minus 12 I1 minus 6 I3. So, uh, this is equation number 2. This is uh, for mesh B, C, F, G, B. Similarly, for third mesh that is C, D, E, F, C. Again in this match, there is no battery or voltage source and in 6 ohm, I3 current is going upward, I2 current is going downward, but as per the orientation of I3, we have to move upward. So, net current will be I3 minus I2 in 6 ohm as per that. So, voltage drop will be 6 into I3 minus I2 for that. While in 12 ohm, only I3 current is there and that is downward current as per the orientation of I3. So, voltage drop will be 12 I3. And uh, this summation is equal to 0. See, there is no voltage source or battery in this mesh. And on simplification, this equation is 0 equal to 18 I3 minus 6 I2. So, this is equation number 3. So, now we have obtained these three equations for these three different mesh. And we have three unknowns I1, I2 and I3 that are the mesh currents for these three different mesh. So, on solving this, we get I1 equal to 6 ampere, I2 equal to 4.5 ampere and I3 equal to 1.5 ampere. And uh, the conclusion that we can draw since all these currents are coming as positive. So, that means it indicates the orientation that we have selected for these three currents I1, I2 and I3. They are as per that orientation since we are getting positive sign with all these currents. If any one current is coming as with negative sign, then that current will be opposite to the orientation that we have selected. But here it will be same orientation since we are having positive sign with all these currents. So, now if we want to find the current in 7 ohm, so this will be I1 current in this direction. In 12 ohm, I1 minus I2 will be vertically downward current, while uh, I2 minus I1 will be upward current. In 6 ohm, I2 minus I3 will be downward current, while I3 minus I2 will be upward current. And in 12 ohm in branch D, the current I3 will be downward current. So, that way we can find the current in different branches or different elements of this circuit. So, this is with the help of mesh analysis. In this way, we can solve any given circuit in order to know the current in different branches uh, or, or different elements of the circuit. And with the help of it, we can also calculate the voltage in different branches and the power in different, different branches also. That is the uh, further utilization or further uh, benefit of it. And uh, this analysis. Next, we see what is super mesh. So, super mesh means basically when there is a current source connected in the common branch of two different mesh, that is we call super mesh. So, like in this circuit given to us, we can see here this circuit is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A, that we have taken the uh, names of different terminals and on that basis the name of the circuit A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A. Now, in this first we see what are the different mesh. So, mesh are A, B, G, H, A. We can write it here. Meshes are A, B, G, H, A. Since it is the smallest closed path in this circuit. Similarly, another is B, C, F, G, B. And third one is C, D, E, F, C. These are the different mesh available in this circuit. Now, in next step, what we are to do? We are to assume mesh currents for these three, uh, for these three different mesh A, B, G, H, A, B, C, F, G, B and C, D, E, F, C. 
So we have assumed I1 current in first mesh in clockwise orientation, I2 current in second mesh in clockwise orientation again, and I3 current in third uh, mesh in clockwise orientation again. That we have assumed. So if we see it, uh, uh, we can uh, as already we have discussed these three currents can be taken in random orientation. That means some of the currents can be taken clockwise, some of the currents can be taken anticlockwise. That is not a problem. So now, uh, if we want to solve this circuit using mesh analysis, what we are uh, what we require, we require three different equations since we have three unknowns i1, i2, and i3. So for solving them, we require three different equations. So what we do in this case, we can write KVL equation for mesh A, B, G, H, A. For this mesh, we can write KVL equation. But for second mesh B, C, F, G, B, we are not able to write KVL equation. Reason being. We are not knowing what is the voltage across 13 ampere current source, which is the uh, which is current source connected in the common branch CF of two mesh, uh, second and third mesh. So we are not knowing the voltage across this. That's why we are not able to write KVL equation for this second mesh B C F G B. Similarly, in third mesh, the same problem is again there. We cannot write KVL equation for this mesh C D E F C. Again, due to the same reason, since we are not knowing what is the voltage drop across this current source of 13 ampere, which is connected in the common branch between these two mesh, second and third mesh. So, what we do in this case, uh, second and third equation, how do we will how we will write it? First equation already we have written for first mesh, there is no problem. Second equation, what we will write with the help of this mesh current I2 and I3, the resultant current we will find in CF branch and that current will be equated with this 13 ampere current of current source that will become equation number 2. And for equation number 3 what we do? We take this outer loop that is loop B D loop B D E G B. And for this we write KVL equation loop B D G E B KVL equation. And for writing that, we assume the loop orientation. So, like we have uh, assumed it clockwise orientation for this loop that we have assumed that we can see in this diagram, we have assumed this. So, on that basis, if we write the KVL equation in this 6 ohm, only I3 current is there and loop orientation and I3 orientation that is similar. So, the equation will be 6 I3, voltage drop in this will be 6 I3 plus in a, a, a next element in this loop is passive element that means 5 ohm resistance. In this I2 current is going upward while I1 current is coming downward as per the orientation of I1 and I2 we have assumed. But as per the orientation of loop we are to go upward. So the net current in upward orientation will be I2 minus I1. So the voltage of as per that will become 5 into I2 minus I1. There is no other passive element in this loop. Now this voltage source as per the loop orientation we are moving from positive to negative plate inside this voltage source or battery with the loop orientation. So the it, this will become minus 13 due to this. This is one of the equation. Another equation for 13 ampere current source if we see it I3 current is going upward as per the orientation that we have taken for I3 while I2 is coming downward. So, net current in upward direction will be I3 minus I2 in this branch CF and that will be equal to 13 ampere since 13 ampere is also upward current and I3 minus I2 is the net current in upward direction. So, this will be 13. This is equation number 2 and first equation that we can write for this mesh A, B, G, H, A. So, that equation will be 4 into I1 plus 5 into I1 minus I2 equal to 75. Since in 4 ohm there is only one current I1 and in that is in the orientation of I1. So, 4 I1 will be the voltage drop here in this. In 5 ohm I1 current is downward, I2 current is upward as per the orientation of I1 and I2. But we are to take net current in downward direction since we are moving downward as per the orientation of I1 in 5 ohm. So, that is why voltage drop will be 5 into I1 minus I2 in this 
and that is equal to 75 volt since we are moving from negative to positive plate inside this voltage source in the orientation of this mesh as per I1 orientation. So, this will be equal to 75 due to this. So, these will be the three different equations for this circuit using mesh analysis and already we have seen it is a super mesh since this current source of 13 ampere that is connected in the common branch CF of the second and third mesh. That is why it is known as super mesh. Whenever a current source is connected in the common branch of two different mesh that is known as super mesh. So, as per that we can write these three equations now with the uh, for this circuit and we are knowing we are we are having three unknowns I 1, I 2 and I 3. So, on solving this we will get the values of I 1, I 2 and I 3. So, that way we can solve the super mesh problem in this way. So, if we see it these are the equations that already we have seen in the previous slide we have written this equation. this equation we already we have written here. S similarly, cable equation for mesh 1 that already we have written that same equation we have written this equation and third equation is this that we also have written. So, these are the three different equations for the circuit that we have mentioned here. So, now by solving these equations we can find all these three currents I 1, I 2 and I 3 in the different branches or different elements of this circuit. So, on solving this we get I 1 equal to 5 ampere, I 2 equal to minus 6 ampere here it is minus sign and I 3 equal to 7 ampere. This minus sign indicates that this I 2 current which will be in opposite orientation of our assumed orientation. And since we have assumed I 1, I 2 and I 3 all in clockwise orientation in the circuit, that means I 2 will be anti clockwise or counter clockwise rather than clockwise orientation since we are having minus sign associated with 6 ampere in I 2. So, that we can see here this current I 2 it will be anti clockwise orientation. And once we know all these three currents I 1, I 2 and I 3 on calcul after calculations, we can find the current in any element of this circuit like in uh, any branch A B, B G or C D, D E or A H in any of the branch we can find the current with the help of it. So, this is way, uh, the way how do we solve super mesh problem or the circuit which is having super mesh for that we solve in this way. So, that is all about this. Uh, in this discussion we have seen how what is mesh and loop and uh, what is the difference between mesh and loop and then how to apply mesh analysis for a circuit and if it is having a super mesh problem what how what will be the procedure or what will be the method for writing the equations for solving super mesh problem and from that we can find the current in different branches or different elements of the circuit and with the help of that we can also find the voltages across different branches and powers in different branches of the circuit. That is all about this. Thank you.